Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Thurman Solomon has got selections here for Saturday, December 31st. For again, today's play of the day. Quick recap what happened yesterday. We had a loss in college football with Clemson, minus 5.5 and, and minus 115 on FanDuel. One of the weirder games that I saw all year long. Uh, to go through the actual numbers here, Clemson had 14 more first downs, 109 more yards, one-time possession battle by 13 minutes. Tennessee went 3 for 13 on third down, and Clemson still lost by 17, which is really just crazy to think about, even crazier when you realize there were no defensive touchdowns for Tennessee. But Clemson had nine of the first 10 drives end in Tennessee territory, and they had a total of three points. It was really just insane to witness how Clemson can move the ball so easily for the first 30 yards or so on every drive, and then immediately fell apart right around field goal range. You had Potter, who missed three kicks. Uh, you had a couple of failed fourth downs, including a fake field goal. Uh, you also just had a lot of really dumb decision making by club uh, by Klubnik, including that uh, quarterback scramble he had with no timeouts, with the clock running down in the first half. It really was just awful execution by Clemson in plus territory the entire game. But Tennessee, when you when you end up uh, getting outgained by over a hundred and you lose the first down battle by fourteen. It's pretty shocking to say they won by 17 points. But Clemson, I thought overall, they really just struggled with some play calling and with some execution uh, in plus territory. And that was the reason why they lost the game and the reason why we lost the bet. So either way, look for a bounce back winner here on Saturday. And for today's play today, looking at an NFL game on Sunday between the Jets and the Seahawks taking place on Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And for this match, we're going to take a player prop in this one. We're going to take Seattle quarterback Geno Smith interception at plus 130 on DraftKings. Time recording of Saturday uh, at 8 p. at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Coverings why I like Geno to throw a pick in this game. First of all, it's a pure value play. There's no way that this should be plus 130. And I feel like as a result, I have to give it out. Geno recently has been very turnover prone. He's thrown at least one reception in four of the last five games. And he's thrown at least one reception in six of the last nine games. So Geno has been very, very, very careless with the football. And also worth mentioning, the one exception in that five-game sample size was against the Niners on Thursday Night Football, where he actually did throw a pick six. However, it was overturned because of a roughing the passer penalty, a controversial one. But the point is, Gino, you can make an argument, has really thrown a pick in five straight games. But I do think a plus 130 for a guy that's been really, really just awful with his ball security, I think it's a great price. And to go through the actual volume for Gino, he's attempted a bunch of passes lately, as Gino has attempted at least 33 passes in each of the last eight games. And now he faces off against arguably the best cornerback tandem in the league with Sauce Gardner and DJ Reed. Both of them are incredible, and I do think that you might end up seeing Gino having to force a couple passes into tough coverage because of how good they actually are. But to go through the receiving core for Seattle – and the overall weapons, very, very shorthanded for this game. Now, DK Metcalf's healthy, but he's going to probably match up on Sauce Gardner, which should be a very good matchup. But Lockett has a broken finger, and he's expected to play. Is he close to 100%? Probably not, but Seattle's in must-win territory, so they have an injured Lockett as their wide receiver, too. You have Goodwin, who's doubtful with a messed-up hand-wrist injury. He's probably not going to play. But you have Noah Font starting tight end, who's questionable, and then you go through the running backs. You have Homer, who's doubtful. Walker, who's questionable, and DJ Dallas, who's questionable. So Seattle might be missing a couple of receivers or a couple of weapons, and all three of the running backs are banged up. Plus, the Jets are allowing just 113.9 rushing yards per game, which ranks 11th in the league. So Seattle might have to abandon the run relatively quickly in this game if Walker's injury is relatively serious or if he's compromised by any means. And with the actual volume that Geno's been throwing and the fact that he's, once again, not done a good job at taking care of the football, I think plus 130 is an absurd price. I think if you're looking at the recent form of Geno with the interceptions and with this Jets defense, I do think this price should be closer to maybe minus 110, minus 105. But plus 130, I think, is an insane price. And for value alone, I have to take it. Now, the Jets defense has not exactly had many interceptions lately. But I do think Geno, with a below average offensive line, Quinn Williams is healthy again for the Jets, so I do think they can generate pressure against this offensive line. And with all the injuries Seattle has, I do think Geno might have to throw at least one pass up for grabs. And I do think, once again, for plus money, it's a great bargain, and I'm going to take it. So, it once again, here for Saturday, December 31st, it's going to be on Geno Smith interception at plus 130 on DraftKings. Bye, everyone.